O'Burn at Borey Creek. Prior to returning to the farm, they lived in Orange, Andrew running a small business and Jody working in agribusiness banking. Uh, they took over the management and ownership of Allo Burn at the beginning of 2012 when Andrew's parents retired to Wagga. Uh, Allo Burn at that, so at that time comprised of about th 3,500 acres and 2,000 breeding ewes. Um, since that time has gone through a rapid period of growth uh, to now uh, running around 9,000 ewes and considerably more area. Uh, Andrew, Jody, and their son Tom, who, fo who joined the business in 2020, cons constantly set goals and are always open to new initiatives, research and ideas. Their passions are breeding vigorous, resilient sheep with stylish wool who are able to thrive in many Australian environments, who can, keep, uh, can meet many market opportunities and they're keen on restorative care of their land. So welcome, Jody. Good morning, everyone. As a, as a um, further introduction to myself, I, when I was first asked by the um, people organising this uh, event to step in for Andrew and Tess Herbert, who were the original keynote speakers, I was really quite delighted as it was, there was some serendipity about, the his, about what I've done in the past. Um, as you heard in my introduction, in my previous career I worked in agribusiness banking and it was there that I had the opportunity to work with Andrew and Tess for many years um, and, and I was able to be very actively involved with them as they went through an enormous growth in their business and worked through a number of challenges. And it was very obvious to me that their deep knowledge of the fundamentals of their business allowed them to always be in, it put them in good stead to always be able to make nimble decisions and optimise every opportunity that came their way because they, they just knew, they instinctively knew everything about their business through measurement and ongoing and really specific management so that they were ready to take on every opportunity that came their way. So my experience working with them has, over the last 10 years since I've been um, on, or, on Alaburn and we took over running the business, has been a constant source of reflection to me to think, to adopt, you know, to, to put into place strategies to cope with an ever-changing industry and, and, and be in good stead to take on uh, new opportunities as they present. <coughs> Sorry. So my first slide should um, have probably have been headed our soil and our pastures, just as a, as a more, a more um, encompassing heading. Alaburn these days comprises of 4,000 acres and we have an additional 3,200 acres of land known as Lake Cullerville, which is located between Bory Creek and Urana. And we also complement this with, uh, with leasing additional country. Our pasture mixes incorporate loosened clover, subclovers and medics. And in recent years, we've been incorporating bicerula and chicory and experimenting with various grasses such as premier digit grass, bambatsi, purple pigeon grass and tall wheat grass. Our crop rotation is typically vetch, wheat, barley and barley under sown with pasture. And sometimes we would just go straight into sowing the pasture. That depends on how much grain we need to get in storage that year. Um, as we grow all of our own grain to feed our weather lambs and finish our weather lambs. We have a low cost, low risk farming program and we've moved away from significant use of nitrate based fertilisers and we've been using liquid humus in the form of fulvic acid to build soil biology and soil health. In 2012, we took on our first lease property, which was three and a half thousand acres at Coolerman. This was taken on at the time when Andrew and I came and took over the business and Andrew's parents retired to Wagga and it was in order to allow us to expand the business so that we could undertake our family farm succession planning and we, could, we had the scope to grow the business. That property, when we took it on, was 100% crop and by the time we left there nine years later, it was 100% improved pasture. It, uh, it was during, while we were leasing this property that we of course ran into the drought of 2018 and 19. And when we got to, our first goal when we took on the business was to grow from the 2,000 breeding ewes to 5,000 breeding ewes. And it was at the beginning of 2018, where, as we were preparing to join ewes that year, and as we all came to the realisation that 
we were going into some serious drought conditions. That, so we, we, dis, we made a decision early on that we weren't going to sell off any of our ewes. We'd taken the first six years to get to where we were with those 5,000 breeding ewes and we decided to sell, we weren't going to sell them. So that's when we also established our first containment feeding area on Alaburn so that we were set up ready to get sheep into that to preserve ground cover and look after the breeding ewes that we had. We had that lease property at Coolerman for a total of nine years and we had a crossover period of two years from being um, 19 and 20 where we had the lease on both properties. So if you could put up the video now. When we took on the lease of the property at Currajong, the property is known as Currajong and it's located at Narandra, so much closer to home, this is what it looked like. It had also been cropped and then as, a, as when the previous tenants on the property had had their Yeah, so failed, this is the place that they, we're proposing to lease. It seems like a good idea today not so the whole property looked like that then we started undertaking so because we had the two-year crossover period before when we still had sheep at the first place and we had we had the benefit of lambs in the feedlot the, the containment area at Alaburn by then we were able to start our cropping program and then we move on to the second video and now so that was in 2019 now here we are these videos were taken in uh, at the end of 22 uh, where you can see now we've got well-established loosened stands and uh, there's a second video that also has a very well-established so which made it um, challenging to find the land. So we now, that, so that we let the lease go on the property at Coolerman and we have now, we've just started our sixth year of the lease of um, the property at Narandra. And of the 5,800 acres, 4,000 acres of it is now to improve pastures. So our sheep. We're currently running 9,000 breeding ewes. Our sheep flock is non-mulesed and has been since 2006. We're breeding a bare-breached, wrinkle-free, body-strike-resistant Palmerino. In 2012, when Andrew and I took over the business, we looked really hard at what traits our sheep had. And we, and we looked at what they were good at and we wanted to assess where we thought we stood in the industry. My father-in-law had been breeding merinos for a long time, um, but he hadn't been submitting data to sheep genetics. So we, we, had, we took the opportunity to, to start collecting all the data that we could. In order to assess how our, what, where our sheep stood, we needed to start collecting measurements. So in 2015, we started weighing from birth. So this is, we collect the first piece of information on our sheep from the day they're born. So I go around each morning and afternoon during lambing and I catch and tag and to identify and weigh every, lamb, every stud-born lamb, preferably within 12 hours of it being born. Um, once it gets past that, they can run much faster than me. So then in 2018, we started scoring maternal behaviour scores to additionally complement all of the other reproductive data and ASBVs that are generated from sheep genetics. We have full pedigree data on all of our stud-born animals via the 50K genomic testing. This is in addition to having identified their dams at birth. We collect other weights during the year, weaning weights, early post-weaning weights, post-weaning weights and yearling weights. We measure them for fat and muscle. We are scoring them for breech cover and breech wrinkle. Scrotal circumference. We collect the full suite of fleece testing, testing done at Riverina wool testers, which includes traits such as comfort factor, staple length, staple strength, yield, and coefficient of variation, and visual scores for all the fleece traits, color, character, visual scores for confirmation, such as feet, toes, pastons, legs, shoulders, back. And then we also do individual worm resistance testing for all stud-born lambs. We started submitting that data to Sheep Genetics in 2012, and we also then started making strategic decisions to introduce external genetics to our flock from other studs with similar breeding objectives. This allowed us to target markets, target traits, and develop linkages to our flock across the industry. 
After many decades of selling rams by private treaty, Andrew and I decided to hold our first on-farm on ram sale in 2017. So this year will be our seventh on-farm ram sale. And this little table that I prepared was just literally the data that I pulled out of our sale catalogues over that period. I didn't have a little table in the 2019 catalog and I didn't get to pull that out before making this presentation. But my point was just to see that by taking measurements and measuring all of our data and recording it really thoroughly and comprehensively that we've been able to observe a steady growth, a steady um, change for the positive in, in just those specific traits, but there are many, many more traits, all of which can be observed. So that's just, it's the importance of measuring what you're doing and knowing where you're going so that you can continue to make strategic decisions. The tools we use to help us with making, ca capitalising on opportunities and understanding where we are so that we can keep planning. We worked with Dr Jim Watts, my father-in-law started off working with Dr Jim Watts um, and he did so for more than 30 years, right up until Jim's passing in 2019. Since 2019, we've worked with NextGen Agri for consulting and advice. We have, we started, we participated with SEVA, you, who are the manufacturers of a product called Regulin, and we started working with them back in 2012, where we helped them conduct some of their field trials in Australia with a, 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 a trial sample of 800 ewes, and we've continued to use Regulin ever since in our out-of-season joined ewes. So that's ewes that are joined um, prior to Christmas to lamb in the autumn rather than the optimum seasonal time for merinos to lamb being in the spring. With the use of regulin in those sheep, we are achieving the same and sometimes even better production rates in, our, in those ewes lambing in the autumn as we do in our spring. We also, uh, and but valid to say that our, all of our stud sheep though lamb in the spring, so they are not subject to, um, they, they don't have, they're not treated with regulin. We have also participated in some additional trial work with SEVA using regulin when once the ewes are scanned pregnant with multiples and um, as they are working to gather evidence to show that the use of regulin can also assist in increased survival of, mul of lambs that are born to multiple births and um, assist them with, therefore that leads them to better growth rates and higher weaning weights because they have the benefit of increased colostrum and milk production from the ewes who are having litters of lambs rather than singles. That information was published in a scientific research paper in 2021, so we actually also have our name on that research paper that was published with Russ Davis from SEVA and um, Dr. Alfonso Albachia, who is the leading melatonin authority in the world out of the University of Zaragoza in Spain. We also currently use uh, pain relief when we're marking lambs and we participated in the trial work with Senesino, who is a Scottish company who worked in conjunction, in collaboration with the CSIRO to develop the, um, the, the um, device to administer numb nuts as a source of pain relief at lamb marking and we worked with them in, those, in their trial work in 2018 and 19, and again have continued to use pain relief at lamb marking ever since. That is also leads us to, uh, it's actually an ongoing requirement wherever possible to use pain relief at lamb marking when for, to support our RWS, which is our Responsible Wool Standard certification. Responsible Wool Standard is a standard owned by the International Textiles Exchange, which who are based out of Europe, and they uh, they have a standard that consumers and producers can uh, can um, choose to comply with as a means of marketing their their wool. Um, we we have done work with sheep genetics over the last few years in and um, maintaining some satellite flock trials for them as they collect data, reproduction data for you use lamby as you lambs. And that was on green tag ewes who lambed for the first time in 2020 and then in 21. And then we have some another satellite flock of red tag ewes who lambed in 23 for the first time and they will be measured and checked again for their reproduction results this year. And that data, once I submit it to Sheep Genetics, I submit it to get our own ASBVs, that data is picked up by Sheep Genetics. 
We also, at the beginning of this year, did some work with the University of New England on a project that they're running, funded by the MLA, on methane emissions in sheep. That was conducted at Alaburn over seven days using 504 ewes. There was seven runs a day of, uh, six runs a day of 12 ewes each time, holding them in a, in a, in a methane chamber to, and they'll be using that data to measure the um, overall efficiency, feed conversion and performance of sheep in the ongoing research to measure uh, the methane emissions in livestock to develop protocols in the future. <clears throat> for how we'll all be able to continue to run our livestock as we meet this, these, um, these ongoing changes in industry. We have a ram entered in the 2024 foot health trial, which is being run by Next Gen Agri and Sheep Metrics and in conjunction with the Murdoch University. And that is, uh, involves nominating your own ram, having him accepted, then submitting 40 doses of semen to the organisers of the trial. They'll be AIing ewes on a designated trial site. The progeny from that trial will be me extensively measured over the first year of their life to collect all of the traits that I just talked about, but with a strong focus on the foot traits. And then once they're 12 months old, the weather progeny of those, the weather portion of that progeny will be exposed to foot rot. And we'll be looking to see measured the vulnerability or resistance to foot rot based on the other foot traits that have been extensively captured and measured. And then this year we also have a ram entered in the 2024 Merino Link SAR evaluation, which has been run out of a property in Bathurst. And that host property has, their breeding focus is on uh, maintaining really good wool in their flock, growth rates, having a plain skin type as they, and as they transition to a non-mules flock there. So we have um, another young ram nominated into that. So which, um, they'll be exciting to see the data coming out of those two trials, see how our sheep are performing in those fields. In order to keep expanding our business and doing what we do, we have made significant investments in infrastructure over the last 12 years. We have put in more grain storage. We have established our containment feeding area, which at this stage comprises of nine pens. Was funded. There was some funding from the LLS for that back in 2018. Uh, and we have plans to build a further 15 pens. So that we're just, the plan being to position ourselves to be able to deal with dry times as they come. We also find that we use it, we use it a lot to, um, on the lease property that we have, the, the one at Narandra, there, there's a, a large area of the property that can't be accessed. It's quite rocky. There's a lot of trees and we can't get in there to, to improve the pastures there. And so grass seeds, being spear grass and corkscrew grass, can actually be quite a problem in the carcasses of the lambs. So we actually we use the containment feeding area to manage the lambs over those periods of time as well. Last year, we finished our new six-stand curved raised board wool shed, which also is, includes covered yards, five-way auto drafter, bulk handler, and a sheep handler. We utilise working dogs. Uh, we, are, we put in fences rather than take fences out to create more paddocks for lambing ewe management and grazing management so that we can optimise performance of our lambing ewes and we're also able to manage our pastures most efficiently. We have installed more water storage and are very conscious of the need to maintain ground cover to, have, to conserve water for both the farming operation and for our livestock security. Uh, and we are, at the moment, to negotiating ongoing capital improvements for our ongoing lease, which will be continuing into the future as well. Um, <clears throat> part of this planning is also to constantly be building resilience and flexibility in our business. That's one of the, the greatest goals that we have is to have to be able to be flexible and take market opportunities as they present themselves. Our primary focus is always on production and genetic development of our dual purpose pole merinos and we don't change enterprises or chase markets. We do however use flexibility and sometimes as cash flow options and in order to create further cash flow options, we will use terminal size over some of our ewes from time to time, which gives us the opportunity to have make, put lambs into markets when we might have had a gap in the cash flow from the merino lambs. 
Uh, we also, what we, the way we run our 9,000 merinos too is over two breeding flocks. And so we have an autumn lambing flock and a spring lambing flock. This also, not only does this allow us to, we have lambs born over two different periods, so we don't have our greatest, our ewes don't all have the same nutritional requirements at the same time, as none of them are in the pregnant or in the late stages of pregnancy or at peak lactation at the same time, so we can manage our pasture resources better to optimise what the sheep need, their nutritional requirements at the time. We also don't have all of our lambs vulnerable to perhaps a significant weather event at the time, which could be devastating if all of our lambs were getting born at the same time. So we spread that risk. Uh, we spread our workload. We only need to mark half the lambs at a time. So we spread that around. And it just, uh, so we, and, and it gives us lambs to sell over an extended period of time. Not all of our lambs are ready to sell and go into the same markets. We have been six monthly shearing since 2014. Uh, we are in fact at our we're at the middle of shearing at the moment of the autumn lambing ewes. Um, our spring lambing ewes will next be shorn in June. They weren't shorn in December as a bit of a trial to go back to seeing what they will produce in 12 months because it's been a long time since we've seen what they um, will, will grow in a 12 month period. And we just took the opportunity, given that um, with shearing prices where they are and where the wool market was, particularly at the end of last year, it was a decision that we made to, to be able to see and measure what it's doing, because it's a long time since we've seen 12 months growth on our sheep. So we're going to have the chance in June to see what that looks like, and that'll assist us in making the decision about which way we go forward. But again, with the staple length that we've been selecting for, we, can, we, are, we are producing up to 68 to 72 mils is the average, micro, average staple length on the six monthly shearing. Um, and so we're going to see what that looks like for 12 months. If it's too long, or we have a problem with tender or something, we can always go back. We constantly examine all aspects of our business and are open to learning and new ideas. We we've all participated in Grazing for Profit through RCS. We've participated in Farm Owners Academy for a period of time. We have attended Nicole Masters soil health and biology workshops and participate in low stress livestock handling workshops. We always have a plan. We conduct business meetings over breakfast and dinner and all the time. We are constantly taking notes and planning and have no problem with changing a plan, because as long as you've got a plan, you can make changes to it and you know what you're changing and you can keep managing, depending on seasonal conditions, markets, and capitalising on new opportunities as they present themselves. So, thank you. Thank you, Jody. Um, something I forgot to mention this morning, we will have a Q&A session after lunch, so uh, Jody will be back up here for all your hot questions. Just make sure you write them down now so you don't forget what they are.